Let's talk about the breakdown of the math test. There are two separate tests. There's the test three, so the third section after you've done reading and writing. Test three, this is 25 minutes, 20 questions, and in this section, you cannot use your calculator. In the next test, the next section, section four, you've got 55 minutes and 38 questions, and in this section, you can use your calculator. So the total time is 80 minutes, and you've got 58 questions. The pacing for the test, we'll talk more about how you can save time and use your time effectively in later videos, but I do want to talk about the pacing or the timing of these two tests, given the number of questions in the time allotted and the uh, fact that you have a calculator for one and not for the other. So it's if you just look at the raw numbers, you have more time for the questions in test four than you do in test three, right? 20 questions, 25 minutes versus 38 questions, 55 minutes. You do the math on that, you've got more time per question for test four. However, from what I've heard from most students, and comment below if you, if you feel this, most students actually find the most time issues in this test. And I think it's just because there are so many questions it's the last test of the major four that you're taking, so you're tired by then. Uh, and there's just a lot to cover that even if you have the calculator, it's still kind of problematic with time. So many students feel rushed simply because there are so many questions in the calculator permitted section. And not only do you have the multiple choice, which we're going to look at in a second, you also got the grid-ins, and they come after the multiple choice, so it's almost like the section restarts and you get into a different difficulty levels. So for that reason, a lot of students, I think, struggle the most with the time here because there's just kind of volume of questions and the position of the test in the order of tests makes a big difference. So for the no calculator, you would think the timing wouldn't be as bad or would be worse because of the, the ratio of minutes to questions. That generally is much of an issue. I think for most students, the issue obviously is not having the calculator uh, can get you stuck on certain questions. So if you have issues with timing in the no calculator section, most likely the issue is there are just a few questions that require some computations by hand and you're getting stuck on them because it's taking a lot of time. If that's the case, as we'll talk about later, you want to identify those questions, skip them, and come back to them later so that you can finish everything that's simple comfortably and then work on those hard questions last and do your best on them. I also think that because you've got no calculator, you can really call test three, section three, the algebra section because it's basically, if you look at all the questions in test three, it's basically all algebra. It's the occasional geometry, the occasional couple other things, but really it's all algebra. Uh, so really it's the algebra section. If algebra is a weakness, you might also find issues with time in this section. Um, but overall, the pacing isn't, I think, too bad once you know what to expect and once you know how to handle those wordy questions. And we're going to talk about that in a later video. There are two question types. You've got multiple choice, which are kind of obvious, right? You've got four choices and you pick the one that works. Then you've got the grin-ins, the free response where you have to come up with your own answer. And we're gonna talk about how to grid these in with some extra rules and tips later. But these are your two question types. Uh, the first three quarters of each section is multiple choice and the last, we'll say quarter of it are your grid-ins. There is an order of difficulty it's a rough order of difficulty, but it does exist for the math section. So they do get harder as they go along. So you can imagine for the no calculator section, the first few questions are easy, the next set are medium, and then the last set are difficult. Now note, it restarts again. In fact, this occurs in both of the sections. And because this occurs because this is where the multiple choices and the grid-ins split. So when you go to your grid ends, your difficulty resets a little bit. Maybe it goes down, not maybe to an easy, easy question, but certainly to an easier question than number 15. 31 will certainly be easier than 30. So that's one thing. So you really have almost two sections in one in terms of the order of difficulty. The second thing to keep in mind is this is a rough order of difficulty. So I don't want you thinking that, oh, okay, number seven is always going to be easy and number eight is going to be medium. Now, I just made the color coding and I broke it down this way just so you can see the trend. I mean, you can have some mixed up, you can have some easier questions in the mediums, you can have some mediums in the easies, uh, the difficulty might bounce around a little bit, but the general trend is to get harder as they go along. Uh, so don't take this too literally, but just use this as a guideline to understand the structure of the test.